oh and gray and the only getting better i'm doing all right getting good grades my teacher's so bright i gotta wear shades i gotta wear shades what is going on sam bone nation happy monday folks you know it baby back to life back to reality happy super bowl week oh man alive man alive sambo nation one more week remaining in the 2023 2024 nfl football season one last hurrah between your san francisco 49ers and your defending super bowl champions the kansas city chiefs big red Big Red, Pat Mahomes, back in the big dance. Travis Kelsey, more of Taylor Swift. Whether you like it or you don't, you're going to get a big, big bowl of it come Super Bowl Sunday, 58. Whoo, man alive. Look, all kidding aside, one of the just, you know, craziest, craziest years uh, as a beloved Philadelphia Eagles fans, but Time to put that in the pass and gear up for what should likely be an unbelievable, unbelievable Super Bowl Sunday. And if you know the band behind The Future So Bright, kudos to you, because that's an all-time classic. All-time classic. Appreciate everybody tuning in, Sambo Nation. Nothing but a ton of love. Shout out to our good friends at Not For Long Media and our proud sponsors, the original Fudge Kitchen. Shipping fudge all up and down the darn country. You know the drill by now. It's always a beautiful, beautiful day in the San Bonerhood to get your fudge game on. The chocolate, the vanilla, the peanut butter. Swirl it all up, throw it up in the air, catch it in your mouth, and Sam Bone it, baby, because it's a beautiful, beautiful time to be a Sam Boner. Oh, man, another weekend. Another weekend for the ages. But, you know, I'm just reflecting a little bit on just the Super Bowl in general, right? The Super Bowl is kind of like that. For me, it's like that one last party, get up, whether you're just sitting down with your family or you decide to get together with some friends. But at the end of the day, like, this is it, right? The Super Bowl. And then what? You got a good seven, eight weeks until opening day, Philadelphia fightings. The uh, pitchers and catchers are going to start to check in to Clearwater, Florida, which is awesome. But, you know, from a sports standpoint, especially right now in the city of brotherly love, are you fucking kidding me? What an absolute disaster that's going on here. God damn, I didn't even, oh, I wasn't even going to talk about this, but everything is up in flames right now. It is not. It is not an unbelievable time to be a Philadelphia sports fan. But again, it's always an unbelievable time to be a Sam Boner. So again, appreciate everybody tuning in. Appreciate all the love, the support. Yeah, just looking back on Super Bowl, though, man. Like as a kid, you know, like the, the, the fine memories that I have of just gathering around for the Super Bowl. It always fell on, shout out to Friduns down in South Carolina, living the good life. Nah, it's all good. But Friduns, his birthday was on January 27th. And back in the day, especially when like the Niners, I think the Niners played back in the 80s, like 88, 89. Don't hold that to me. I'm no stats guy here, Sam Boners. But like those were the days, man. Fat Pat, the Dow Brothers, Joey Mayo, Friduns. We would go over to, uh, you know, Kiki's house back in Hatboro off of Krugel Street. And, and dude, it was unbelievable, man. All we were doing was playing pickup football and racing big wheels down Krugel Street till the goddamn cows came home. And then once that kickoff was ready to go, around 6, 6, 15, we all gathered in and we watched the Super Bowl. And I, I just, oh, my God, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. But those were the days, man. Like, those were the days. Growing up in the 80s, the early 90s, just did not get any better. And unfortunately, I think we're in, I think we're, I think we got a problem on our hands. I really do. I, I think we have a major uh, epidemic of just where kids have completely become addicted 
to devices, games, and last but not least, Sambo Nation, Fortnite. Now, look, I got to read a little bit more into this Fortnite. My 13-year-old has quickly become extremely, extremely addicted. And we're probably, from a parent standpoint, a little harsher on most uh, half hour here, hour here, but every once in a while, you're just, you know, you slip your brain, you're downstairs watching some golf and two hours go by and you're like, holy shit, you've been playing Fortnite for two and a half hours. And here's the problem, right? Here's the problem. Like the fucking sun finally came out this week. Beautiful Saturday, beautiful Sunday. Sam Jr. Had a nice little fucking, oh God, I'm now I'm getting crazy. Let me take my jacket off. Damn it. Hold on. Take a deep breath. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't know where I went with this, but you know, like they're not outside. They're not playing pickup basketball. They're not throwing the football around. They're playing Fortnite as long and as much as they can. And there's nothing wrong with it. They're still having fun. They're still communicating. I love them to death. But like when it comes to listening, like the listening aspect of it, time for dinner. 10 minutes go by. Time for dinner. Your dinner's cold. And then, like the fourth time, you got to go up there and you got to wring his goddamn neck. You got to grab the paddle. Like, you're done, dude. You're done. So you suspend him for seven days. And guess what happens right along that third and fourth day? You start to have quality conversations with your kid again. I'm not even freaking kidding. But that said, a lot of it does fall back on the parent, right? I don't think that there should be a uh, an extended period of time where your son can play two, three, four hours of Fortnite. I think 30 to 45 minutes is perfectly just fine because after that, this game is so repetitive and so addictive. It just continues to just help. It just, you're just going to bury yourself a hole that becomes so deep to the point where you're going to get into this little bit of a feud with your son. And I've been there. I've done that. And I've been able to discipline him. And now he's playing again. But he's setting alarms because he knows, he knows if it goes past that 30 minute mark or that 45 minute mark, I'll be there because I look forward to it. I'm ready to go and I'm going to knock his goddamn socks off. But no, they've been good, right? So I don't know. The lesson there is more discipline and threaten the shit out of them, right? Threaten the shit out of them. But that's it here today. I hope everybody's having a real, real, real nice day. Happy Monday, folks. Another uh, episode of the Sam Boner Show. Brought to you by Not For Long Media and the Original Fudge Kitchen. Woo! Oh, man. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Sam Bone Nation. Who do you like? Who do you got? Wing Month 2024 is officially in the books. And let me just tell you, folks, it did not end quietly. It really didn't. It did not end quietly. You know, and Sam Bone in, and I'll say this all the time. Look, it is not easy. And Sam Bone or Mick is probably... One of the more, I don't know, like nicer food reviewer, Sam Boners. Like, I I don't like to bring a business down. I really do not like to bring a business down. That said, I'm always on my quest to find the best. There's no fucking way I'm going to drive 55 minutes to spend $25, then have to drive 55 minutes back unless I'm out there Ubering for some crazy people. And we can get into that in a second too. Holy shit, man. Or maybe I shared some of those stories last week. But anyway, I'm always on my quest for the best. I want good food. So yeah, you're going to get an eight and a nine, nine and a half here and there. But in this particular case, right, we had a place that has never received more recommendations in the history of of Sam Boners, the rib rack in Northeast Philadelphia. I'm pretty sure the rib rack uh, provided the wings to the wing bowl. I think PJ Wheelahan took that over down the road and the rib rack's been a lot, been around for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, the rib rack is probably unbelievable. The wings were good. The cornbread looked amazing. The ribs were probably fall off the bone, but I was there to Sam bone the wings. I was there for the people, right? When you got 60, 70, 80, 90 people knocking down your door, you got to get to the rib rack. The wing month, it's fraudulent. If you don't get to the ring rack, rib rack, then you, you go, right? You go, because that's the Sam Boner spirit, and that's exactly what I did. On the last day of wing month 2024, I got to the rib rack. And it ain't easy either, because they don't open until 3.30 in the afternoon. But hey. We're there. Sam Boner Mick is there. He's posted up right there on the corner of Bustleton and Tyson. And 
I, I, I just was, I was took back. I was took back. Like I love wings. I'll eat any wing, right? I've never had a bad, bad wing. I've never had a bad, bad cheesesteak really at the end of the day, but I'm out there to Sam bone these wings and put them in concert in serious con uh, consideration for a top 10 spot, right? That's all it is, right? They're recommending this place because they think they are worthy of a top 10 spot. And just because you're not in the top 10 doesn't mean you're not good or doesn't mean you're not a legit wing spot. So with that being said, to just clear the air, when you have 100 people recommending a place that should be in the top 10 and it doesn't even sniff the top 10, you then quickly become disappointed. Would I eat 100 of those wings on Super Bowl Sunday? Yes. Are they top 10 worthy? No. So shoot me already, Sambo Nation. No, I'm just kidding. But man alive, it is not easy being a Sam Boner. But it's incredible that when a guy turns his back and gives somewhat of the iffy, iffy review, the amount of people that just pop out of the woodwork, especially the ones that aren't even following, just want to... Oh my God, there's so much hate. There's so much hate out there, but you know what? You gotta love it. And if you need a hug, why don't you come over to my house and I'll give you a nice, tight squeeze, Sambo Nation, because that's all we're trying to do out there is spread good vibes, help local businesses, and bring light to the world. But hey, what are you going to do? Every day is not going to be the, the finest of, of days. And, you know, I, 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 I laugh. I do. I really, I do. I can't help just not to laugh because you can't win. <laughs> you really cannot win, but we're going to keep on, uh, you know, hammering. We're going to keep on grinding. And, you know, as I always say, I'm going to keep on saying bone. I hope you keep on saying bone too. So what's that? Happy cutlet month. Just like that. Happy cutlet month, Sam bone nation. You just gotta love it. You gotta love cutlet month. Like obviously the standard is cheesesteak. It's always cheesesteak month. Everybody dropping cheesesteak, Sam Bones. And there is no rules in Sam Boners. We're not going to prevent anybody from Sam Boning anything just because it's a particular month, right? Who gives a shit at the end of the day? But the context is it's cutlet month. So when you have cheesesteak month, you have hoagie month, you have hot roast pork month, you got to pay a little homage to cutlet month. And there's something to be said about cutlet month in addition to those other major three sandwiches here in the Sam Boner hood, the capital of sandwiches across the entire country. Cause you know, it, Philadelphia is the sandwich capital. And that's why we're out there. That's why we're Sam bone. And, and again, appreciate all the support. Love, love, love seeing a lot of the debuts coming in like over the weekend. Shout out to uh future Sam Boner athlete, Colin Wade, a LaSalle grad, JMU lacrosse player, home for the weekend, wanted to get his Sam Bone on a long, long time coming. Colin, we're proud of you. You've been talking about it for three, four months. You finally put it over at the top with a nice little Sam Bone review from the Collegeville Italian Bakery right there in Collegeville with a little, uh, what do you call it? Not the drunken cutlet, the vodka cutlet, the, uh, blah, 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 blah. I forget, whatever. There's lots, lots of names for it. We'll get to the Collegeville you know, eventually, but there's so much love out there uh, across Sam Boner Nation. The Collegeville Italian Bakery has probably been hit a good dozen times. I have yet to get my Sam Bone on there. Yo, Neary is always holding down the fort there at the Collegeville Italian. And, you know, it's been like, you know, so we had a top 10. 2021 was the last time we dropped a cutlet top 10. And then we rolled back cutlet month in September of 2022. And we never updated the top 10. And then in April of 2023, we decided to roll it out again. And that's when shit hit the fan. We had some pirate smuggler hack the page. Things went completely to shit. Spent the entire month of April bugging out, wigging out. Should we open up a new page or we ever get this puppy back? But shout out to uh, Canada Dan, Dan Dembski and his, his brother, Brian, coming through in the clutch. Oh my God. I'll never forget it. Brian recognized me walking poolside in Florida in uh, where were we? Hollywood, Florida. Well, Sam Boner love comes to talk in his brother. Dan's got some connections with meta. One thing led to the next three weeks later, boom, we got the count back and we're rocking and rolling ever since, man. It's been unbelievable. So nothing but love out there to Sam Bone nation. Appreciate all the, uh, all the support. And uh, let's, let's, you know, if we get hacked again, if I, if I got done, I, I was like, God, I am, I am outie here. 
Swinging a long drive, deep left field. Watch that baby out of here. A three-run home run for Chase Utley. All right, Sambo Nation, who we got? Super Bowl 58 is upon us. We are making a heavy, heavy push. Well, you know, here's the problem, right? Here's my problem, Sambo Nation. I like to eat. I like to drink. I like to be merry. But I also need to work out. So I'm trying to find new ways to improve my health. And just recently, even this morning, went to the gym. I swam like 20 or 25 laps. Like, dude, swimming is freaking really hard, man. Like, you get winded so fast. But I'm starting to think, like, maybe that's a very effective workout. Uh, it's only a matter of time. We'll tell. But Or will it, right? Because I can't justify my workouts. I can't justify my four, five-mile walks with my Wesley Poo because my problem is, is snacking and eating. Like, I can't stop eating. Like, I always have, like, wheat thins and cheese or buffalo chicken dip with some Tostitos. You know, I love cheese. A good uh, cheese. You open up the box of cheese, it's forget about it. Nice. I love, a, I love a good trail mix, chocolate-covered walnuts. You fucking name it. I want to eat it. So it's like almost it can't be in my possession or I'm going to eat it. That's why you see me walking all the time. I'm going to the gym constantly. But I will say, like, I've, I've found some maybe some new ways to just, like, spruce it up again, right? Like, I don't want to just continue to walk down that hamster wheel. That's for my dog. Nothing but nothing but love for good Wesley Poo. You're going to turn five soon. But, you know, I'm going to try to do some things that I normally have not done before and see how that can effectively work out for this, you know, dad bod of a Sam Boner, if you will. But, like, here's a couple things that I've realized. Swimming, one, awesome. I did a yoga class. I did a yoga class. Like, has anybody ever done yoga and then like maybe after yoga jumped into like the sauna or a steam room. Like I understand now why hot yoga is a thing. I have never done hot yoga. Maybe we should roll out some hot yoga content, but like I never have felt so good coming out of a sauna for 20 minutes. And then I've never felt so good doing like a 30 minute yoga. Can you believe it? This Sam Boner mech is popping in yoga classes. So you tie the two together. That might be the cure. That might be the cure to it all. I'll be Sam Bonin every single meal. But you know what? Like, it's time to shake it up. It's time to shake it up. So we're going to be doing some swimming. We're going to be doing some yoga. We're going to be doing some sauna and some steam room. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll be asking my question. I'll be asking the million-dollar question. What the hell is a Sam? That's what you guys will be asking. What the hell is a Sam Boner? What, what is this guy doing? I don't understand, right? Just stick to the sandwiches. I, what, what do you want me to do? All, all I do is eat sandwiches. That would be boring. That would be boring. Sam Boner is all about community. It's all about sports. It's all about good loving. It's all about the quest for the best, embracing the beat, getting after it. You got to love it. You absolutely got to love it. So again, shout out to Colin Wade, getting it done. Love it, young lad. I love it. Who fucking next, Sam Boners? Take a sip of my water. Hopefully my... Hopefully my wife doesn't show up here because I'm just like a complete animal right now in my, uh, call this my studio, my studio where we just let it rip, let it vent. And, uh, I don't know, share some bullshit with you guys. If anybody out there is listening, whoo. So we had some, uh, we had some jam boning going on over the weekend, the wife and some other couples head over to the good old. Keswick Theater to see a Michael tribute, the ultimate Michael Jackson tribute slash experience at the Keswick Theater on Friday night. Oh, man. I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. Right? We bought these tickets like two, three months ago. Just want to hang out, get after it. The, the Keswick Theater... I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it, it needs, it needs a makeover. It really does. A 1000% complete makeover. I've seen a couple shows there in the last year or so. And here's the unfortunate part about the Keswick and what I witnessed on Friday night. We go in there and we sit down. We are center cut smack dab in the middle of the center section and it's a packed house. Don't get me wrong. It's a packed house. But here's the problem, right? Like, when you go out on a Friday night to go listen to some music, live music, I, I can't sit. I think a lot of people would be in agreement with me there. Like, who wants to go to a concert and sit down 
and watch a musical act of Michael Jackson, I might add you. Like, if, if, if you're listening to Michael Jackson and you don't have some sort of, like, rhythm, <laughs> you, you, just, you just aren't breathing right. I don't even know how to explain it, right? Because Michael Jackson and his music makes me want to dance, right? Makes me want to dance. And even my wife, we're sitting there like, we got to be fucking getting there. We're just going to sit here and listen to, you want to be started something. You got to be started something. You got to get over. Yeah. And I'm just like, dude, we got to get up. Like, we got to get up. Finally, Michael Jackson, the guy or whatever. And like the fifth song was like, all right, everybody up. I'm like, boom, holy shit, everybody up. And not everybody got up. Not everybody got up. As a matter of fact, there was more people videotaping this goddamn concert that wanted to stand up and dance, right? I mean, seriously, look, I know I took a couple videos, but like these people were fucking videotaping the entire goddamn concert. It's not even the real Michael Jackson. It's not even the real Michael Jackson already. But look, to each his own, to each his own. But I'll tell you what, that was an absolute crime. Absolute crime. Or should I say, a smooth criminal. All right, Sambo Nation, we are alive. We are well. Happy Cutlet Month. Happy Super Bowl 58. Uh, shout out to our good friends at Hank Sauce. Use the product code. Continue to smash that product code. Sam Bone, the best hot sauce in the world. A couple months from now, we'll be clanging and banging in Sea Isle, rubbing hot sauce all over our balls, and it's going to be the greatest, greatest summer in the history of Sam Bone Nation, baby. Summer 2024. Let's fire it up. The weather's about to break. It's time to rip out your sticks. Get some golf in. Get some beers in. Get some hanging out going on. Oh, you just got to love it. You got to love to see the sunshine popping out. Because especially now, with consideration of your Philadelphia sports teams really kind of at the, the bottom of the, uh, the, 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 the sports totem pole, if you will. Like, look, the Eagles are out. The Flyers lost their goalie. And the 76ers have lost their 7-2 monstrous center due to just, you know, a torn meniscus, uh, some sort of flap. I, I don't know what it is. There's promise and hope that he could sit out the next one or two months and still be ready for the playoffs. I think with the talent that we have on the court, we will still continue to be a playoff contender with Joel Embiid. I firmly believe we can win the NBA Finals. But without him, it's just not very... Uh, likely, and it's just a shame, man. It really is. Like, we cannot, you know, the debacle of the Phillies, the collapse of the Eagles, our star goalie is being, you know, I don't even want to get into that because I hope it's not true, and then Joel B goes down. Like, <laughs> mother of God. How about that Ben Simmons return? Hey, they won the game, so there's nothing really we can kind of write home about, but the fact that, like, anybody out there thought that, the Philadelphia fan base was going to clap their hands for Ben Simmons is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. And that guy got booed every single time he touched the ball, every single time he entered the game, walked out of the game, the boo fest was on and rightfully so rightfully so honest to God. Yeah. You had a good career here and there. You did some good things. Your best numbers as a career stand under the, uh, you know, Sixers, um, organization, the Sixers Jersey, but like, dude, you just, you just pushed out, man. You really did. Like you never, you never like tried. You never wanted to admit that maybe you were a right-handed shooter or something along those lines. Like you never gave it a chance, man. If you could have just God put that last tool into play and started to shoot the ball, you would have been an unbelievable, unbelievable player. You would have been right up there with Allen Iverson. And at this point in time, I think we would already have an NBA final, but Again, we're doomed. We are doomed. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this story, this final story before I run out of here and go eat a uh, sandwich. This came up over the weekend. This came up over the weekend. All right, ready, Sambo Nation? Ready? Anybody out there, anybody out there, Sam Boner-wise, think that they could beat Caitlin Clark one-on-one? -on -one? We debated about this over the weekend. Good couple, couple good groups of your friends, cousins, and some of them, including Fried Uns, thinks that he could. Hold on a second, one sec, one sec, Sam Boner Nation. This is my mom calling. She always calls me at twelve thirty. It is my birthday. We are forty-four. Hey, mom. Thanks, mom. 
12.30 on the dot. You got to love it. 24 felt, didn't, it never felt any better. <laughs> 24 feels great. <laughs> ah, well, hopefully we have a good year here, mom. You got to love it. The sun is shining. All right. I love you too. Thank you for calling. I'll call you a little later. All right. Bye. Thank you. There's my mother. She calls me every birthday at the exact time I was born. There you go. So I guess the cat's out of the bag now. Sam Boner Mick. 44 bananas, February 5th, 1230 p.m. Oh, shit. I don't even know where we were. Ah, whatever. That was stupid. We were having a big debate on who could match up with Caitlin Clark. These freaking clowns thought that they could actually beat her one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> you couldn't beat her two-on-one. -on -one. The five Sam Boner, six Sam Boners here couldn't beat her six-on-one. Are you kidding me? So what's the early Super Bowl line, Sam Boner? We're going to run here. Uh, I don't even know what I talked about for the last half hour, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of it and hopefully you didn't drive your car off the road. Let's see here. The early line Super Bowl, San Francisco 49ers minus two and the over under 47 and a half. Uh, last shout out to uh, Carl Weathers, AKA Apollo Creed Chubbs rest in peace. Um, just an unbelievable speech that, you know, Sylvester Stallone gave in respect to Apollo Creed. And, and uh, you know, he, he holds a special place in, in our hearts here in Philadelphia. Uh, thanks to Rocky. So uh, until next time, Sambo Nation, appreciate all the support here as we fire up Cutlet Month. And just in, you know, short seven, eight weeks here, we'll be uh, firing up spring training. And before you know it, your Philadelphia fightings will be taking the field. So. Sam Boner out. Love y'all. And baby, it's on. Driving 45 minutes just to grab a bite. Know that it's worth it when the neon's inside.